<laughs> Is that amazing? And you know, that, that's one of the things about Dr. Falwell that infected, thank goodness, all of us. And that was love for people and a smile. That smile was infectious. And so was Doug's smile. You know, it, it was engaging. And when someone smiles at you, it's hard to look at them like a sourpuss, isn't it? And, and he had the uncanny ability of making friends in that much time, Dr. Falwell did. And he did of Robbie, obviously. I love what Robbie had to say there. He loved me because he came from some tough stuff, but Dr. Falwell loved him. And that's what he did for all of us, didn't he? Sometimes it was kind of tough love. It was that big, heavy Bible right in the chest as he walked past you in the hall on the way back, right? But he loved all of us. And he was not afraid to build a team. He wasn't a Lone Ranger. He wasn't, it's my way or the highway all the time. He had folks around him. He knew how to bring people alongside that could, could take the vision down the road further. And this guy's vision started right here as well. Well, make welcome to the stage, my good buddy, Mark Lowry. <laughs> it's been a while since you've been back here, hasn't it? Oh, yeah, it has been. That, they know we're old. We get the stools. I know. And we're you, the old people now. And you have good. one of those Vestal Goodman chairs. I know. There. I get the big chair now at all the Gaither shows. But it's so good to be back, and I cannot believe there's not one building left standing that we were ever in. Not one. Not one. And I got lost in the parking lot today, and that's not a joke. I was thinking about the old dorm, you know, they're not dormitory. The, well, we stayed in, I stayed did. in the hotel, did you? No, I never did stay in the hotel. We no stayed in air those... conditioning. Yeah. Remember that? I came from Texas. If you, you go without food before you go without air conditioning. And I had a box fan, and remember those old beds they got from the insane asylum? Now, I do think they moved those over they for had us. They yeah. had dents in them where the crazy people had beat them up. And Falwell puts them in our dorm and tells us this is a visionary school. <laughs> but I tell you what, God spoke to me here. Come on. God called me. I was studying to be a businessman. I was on that business trajectory like I'd have any business being a businessman. But anyway, and God spoke to me, me here in that old dorm one Sunday afternoon. And I'm telling you, I'm a Baptist. He don't speak to me audibly. I couldn't handle it. <laughs> but he spoke to my heart. I'm telling you, it's the one time I know God spoke to me because looking back, Come on. I can say that was his hand. That was his call. He said to me these words, and I'm not kidding you. Why won't you do what I want you to do? Okay, let me tell you what the situation. I was laying on my bed. I was all, trying to go to sleep because it was a Sunday afternoon. I just had lunch. It was too hot to get up, and I was too awake to go to sleep, so I started praying because that always puts me to sleep. And, <laughs> and I started praying, and the Lord spoke to me and said, Why won't you do what I want you to do? And I said, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And I started talking to him like it was normal. And he said, even if it means go into music? Uh -oh. And I said, well, yeah, but you've never mentioned it. <laughs> and you've never called me. I need a call. And he said, I'm calling. Mm -hmm. So I put out a fleece. I just have to tell this. This is on the honor of David Ranlett. I put out a fleece, because that's what you do when you, or you're young. And I put out a fleece, and, and it was answered that night, Sunday night. Uh, 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 the guy who wrote, For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. He was here, right, doing a concert. So I said, when the Lord called me, I said, okay, this is your idea. You get the word out. And I want someone to ask me to sing at church tonight. There was no way that could happen. Uh, Alfred B. Smith was doing a concert that night. Got through the service. I was walking out that door. Remember that door down there in the old sanctuary? I was walking out that door, and Dave Ranlett grabbed me. I didn't even think he liked me. He, he grabbed me, and he said, will you sing in chapel tomorrow? And the Lord said, where are you? I'm in church, and someone just asked me to sing. Then Jerry Falwell passed me in the hallway. He said, will you sing on church this Sunday? Charles Hughes came up to me and said, will you be my singer? And just like that, God got the word out. 
and I have not been unbooked to this day. So that's where that's where it happened. You started and Mary, in music. did you know, came from this place? Yeah. I wrote that just a few years after I graduated. But when Jerry asked me to do the Living Christmas Tree, I was I was 1984. I was 26. And he said, will you write the living Christmas tree? And not knowing that I couldn't, I said, I would. <laughs> and so I sat down to put the Christmas tree program together. And I wrote this little monologue that Jerry would quote at, at the end of every, every Christmas tree that year. He, he memorized it and quoted it. They said, I, I wonder if Mary realized the power and the authority and the majesty she cradled in her arms that first Christmas. I wonder if she realized those little hands were the same hands that had scooped out oceans and formed rivers. And those little infant lips were the same lips that had spoken worlds into existence. And when she was holding her little baby, she was holding the fullness of the Godhead in an eight-pound bundle. And then he would give the invitation. And I thought, well, you know, there must be something there. <laughs> so I thought, if I could have a cup of coffee with Mary, what would I ask her? And so I wrote down everything I could think of. And the only questions that made the song were the ones that rhymed. Because <laughs> you have to rhyme. Yeah, you got to rhyme. So, but then I so you know, I was never invited to be in any of the singing groups. Really? Never. Sounds of Liberty, Never. But I was in the Preacher Boy Corral. That lasted one year. Did you kill it? They put a Preacher Boy Corral together. Why oh weren't my. you? Oh, you were too young. I was. Well, what they did, Sumner Wimp wanted a Preacher Boy Corral. So they got all these preachers together, and then they asked me to join their group because nobody else wanted me. And I was the only one that could sing. You should have heard us. <laughs> There's nothing worse than hearing a bunch of preachers sing. <laughs> they all sing out of the side of their mouth. Yeah. Is that right? It is. Yeah. Well, so it's good to be speaking here. of singing. Yeah, we haven't sung together in a while. In a while, would you like to? And some of my favorite times were singing with you. Likewise. Hey, but uh, we I'm need a fan Jody. of his voice. I always have been a fan of his voice, and uh, so you. this will be cool. What are we going to sing? He touched me. Oh, okay. Come Jody, no, welcome, Jody Brer. Okay. Avalon. We, let me ask you a question. Can we? Is it possible to turn the house lights up a little bit so I can see the audience? Is that possible? I don't know how up to date y'all hey, are. Hey, they're there. Yeah, they're coming up. Uh, okay, we need a bass singer. You know, in the vocal band, we never had a bass singer. And, <laughs> and, and, and if you can sing bass, raise your hand. Can anybody sing bass? Wait, are you talking about just calling someone up out of the crowd? Yeah, out of the crowd. Look, there's one over here. There's one there. Yeah. All right, you come up. Come up. Seriously. We're going to do this. Well, Bill didn't sing bass either. Come on. <laughs> now, what is your name? Lou Taylor. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> uh, um, could you say And that how you? old are you? I am 20 years old. Lord, when you hit puberty, you're going to be loved. <laughs> All right. Come on over here. Come Lou. on over here. That's amazing. We're going to have us a real bass singer, y'all. Oh, my goodness. Does he know the song? Do you know the vocal band arrangement? You heard he touched me? Okay. I can figure it out. Wow. Where has uh, he been all our lives? <laughs> it was written in 1963. You were a twinkle in your daddy's eye. Here we go. All right. Kick it off.
You heard me mention Charles Hughes. He was a student here, a little older than me, and Dr. Falwell was really grooming him, I believe, for, for greatness in the future, and man, he could preach, and he asked me to be his singer, and we started traveling from coast to coast, it felt like. Charles would take a world map and a yardstick, and if it reached, he thought we could drive it in a weekend. And we were headed to Tioga Center, New York one weekend. And about 6.30 in the morning, Charles and Dave Musselman and I were asleep in the back of this van. And Dick, our driver, was asleep in the front of the van. <laughs> and I woke up and I felt the van sliding down the road. And I remember thinking, now this ain't right. And I woke up and said, Dick, wake up! And then he came to, and then he slammed it into the median. He slammed it into the guardrail. And slammed, I thought, Lord, I should have let him sleep. <laughs> but we went through this thing. I broke 11 bones. Charles Hughes was in a coma for two and a half months. Dick Bernie, or, uh, David Musselman was beat up real bad. He was sleeping in the middle, so we protected him, I guess. <laughs> and Dick Bernie, or, Broke all his ribs, nearly lost an eye, and it was unbelievable. And Dr. Falwell rallied the prayer warriors. And Charles Hughes has been such a great influence on me. i tell you one thing I learned from Charles, and I wrote a song about it. He used to preach a sermon called Six Things God Doesn't Know. Unbelievable sermon. And I wrote this little song that says, Mama always told me God knows everything. He hung the stars and knows them all by name. But now that I'm older and I've grown to love him so, I found that there are some things even God just doesn't know. God doesn't know a sinner he can't love. A broken heart he can't mend. A fallen tear he can't dry. God doesn't know a place where he can't be in a moment's time to meet your every need. There are some things my God doesn't know. And I thank you, Charles. Now, let's all sing together before we... Right? Yeah. Okay, uh, we're going to do this. Uh, hit it. Since I started for the kingdom, since my life he controlled, since I gave my heart 
to Jesus the longer I serve him the sweeter he grows sing the chorus with me the longer I serve him the longer I serve the sweeter he grows the sweeter he the more that I love him the more that I more love he bestows more love day. 